Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com. In my last product review video, we checked out a really expensive model, the Lionel Vision Line Niagara. Now, the Vision Line Niagara is a top tier model. It has all the latest cutting edge technology and features, and because of that, it's very expensive. It has a retail price right at $1,900. Now, of course, a lot of people can't afford that, and they say, geez, why does Lionel make everything so expensive? Well, they don't make everything so expensive. It just depends on how much detail you want and how many cutting edge features you want in the model. So today, we're going to take a look at something on the other end of the spectrum. This is a new Lionel starter set. Now, it's not the cheapest starter set that they make, but it's sort of a mid-level to high-level starter set. And if I was going to recommend a starter set to get, it would be something like this. The retail price is just over $400. And for that money, you get a very nice set. This is the new Lionel Lion Chief Equipped Santa Fe Super Chief set. So what is a starter set? Well, quite simply, it's a set that has everything you need to get started in the hobby. So it's got the engine, the passenger cars, the track, the power supply, a remote control, and it also has Bluetooth on board so that you can run the set from your smartphone if you choose to do so. Now, the train that's contained in this set is not a high-end model train. It's more along the lines of a toy train, sort of like the trains that Lionel used to make in the post-war period in the 1950s and so forth. So this is a semi-scale toy-like train. It's ruggedly built. It doesn't have a lot of super fine detailing, and that makes it a good choice for something to put in the hands of small children, because if you run it off the rails or something like that, you're not going to do a ton of damage to it other than maybe scratch up the paint. So Lionel offered this set in their 2018 Volume 1 catalog, and then they started arriving in stores around early fall of 2018. Now, one of the reasons why I chose to review this set is because it's a Santa Fe Super Chief, which is one of the legends of Lionel. It's one of their signature trains ever since around 1948 when the 2333 was released, and really 1950 when the 2343 was released. Ever since then, it's been a Lionel legend, and so anytime they do a Super Chief, it sort of continues that legacy. Stats-wise, the length of the engine is right at 12 inches. The length of each of the three passenger cars is right at 12 and a half inches. The length of the entire set is 52 and a half inches. The engine weighs three pounds, two ounces, and each of the cars weighs about one pound, two ounces. The pulling power for the engine is right at one pound, four ounces, which is pretty darn good for a starter set. And the minimum curve needed to operate this set is 031. Now, even though the set harkens back to the legendary post-war Santa Fe Super Chief sets, under the hood, the engine has all of the amenities that a 21st century starter set should have. The engine is powered by two DC CAN motors. This is a Lion Chief equipped engine, so you can run the engine with the included Lion Chief remote that comes with the set when you buy it. Or, because the engine does have Bluetooth on board, you can run the engine with the Lion Chief app on your smartphone or tablet. The engine comes with Lionel's Rail Sounds RC sound system. However, for you old school guys who like to run these sets without sound effects, you can disable the sound system with a switch that's on the underside of the engine. The engine features an operating directional headlight and operating couplers. The couplers are not electrocouplers, but they're the traditional thumbtack style couplers. And the couplers, pilots, and trucks are all die cast metal, and the interior of the cab is lighted. As we go in for a closer look, well, this image right here is what O-Gage Railroading is all about. I am sure that the front of this engine is responsible for getting legions of kids into the hobby over the years, and rightly so, because you just can't beat the look of the Super Chief. It's just so beautiful. And for a starter set, this engine is actually pretty nicely detailed. We've got some add-on grab irons on either side of the headlights. The headlights are operational, as I said earlier, and they are directional. So when you're in the forward direction, they're on, and when you back up, they automatically shut off. The paint job, as you can see, is absolutely flawless. We've got some nice molded in details. Here is the die cast metal pilot and coupler, and as I said, the couplers are operational. 
We've got some lighted number boards on the sides. You'll see those better in just a moment. And then up top, we've got the iconic windows on these FTs that to me look like a pair of eyes. Around the corner, well, here's that better view of the number board. And down here, we've got die cast metal truck side frames. There's a little metal ladder here as well. We've got some nice molded in details going down the side of the engine. The doors don't open, but this is a starter set, so that's okay. But the windows do have clear plastic inserts in them. On the inside of the cab, there are two hand-painted crew figures. And as I said before, the interior of the cab is lighted. As we move on down, you can see the rest of the side of the engine. We've got these nice porthole windows, and they do have clear plastic inserts in them, which is always a nice touch. Again, the paint job is fantastic, and we've got some nice molded in details going down here as well. On the back of the engine, there's a lot of what we've already seen. Good molded in details. Another operating coupler down here. We've got a couple of metal steps, one on each corner. We've got a molded in door and a window. But unlike the other windows on this engine, this one does not have a clear plastic insert in it. The top of the engine looks fantastic, especially for a starter set. We've got a couple of add-on metal horn pieces here. Most of the rest of the details are molded in, but they still look pretty good. And then we've got these four exhaust stacks. And while this engine does not have a smoke unit on board, these exhaust stacks are hollow and they do go to the inside of the engine. And so it gives you a little bit more of a realistic look that way. Here's a look at the underside of the engine. There's a speaker for the sound system right here in the middle. We've got two power pickup rollers, one per truck. There are two traction tires on the inner axle of each truck for a total of four. And then right here is that switch that I mentioned earlier that activates or deactivates the onboard sound system. Here's what's on the inside of the engine, and as you can see, there's not a whole lot here. That's modern technology for you. Really, the two most prominent things are the two DC CAN motors. Everything else that runs the engine and does the sound system and so forth is right here. Now, while I've got the shell off this engine, I'm going to go ahead and give you a bit of a maintenance tutorial. What we're going to do is change one of the traction tires on the front truck. Because when I was testing this engine, I was running it really hard on the layout, and I managed to stretch and loosen one of the traction tires on the front truck, and so it needs to be changed out. Now, changing out traction tires is not something that happens very often but it does happen from time to time. And so for that reason, there's a package of spare traction tires included with the set when you buy it. And in fact, most O-scale engines come with spare traction tires when you buy them for just this reason. And so what we're gonna do is change out one of these traction tires. Now on most Lionel models and most other models for that matter, you normally don't have to take off the shell to change a tire, but on this starter set engine, you have to, and so I've got the shell off, so we're gonna go ahead and do it. So what I'm gonna do is loosen up a screw on the underside of the truck to detach the truck from the motor, and then that'll give us access to the top of the side frames, and then we can detach this side frame and get access to the traction tire. All right, so the screw we're gonna remove is right there in the middle of the truck. So we'll go ahead and Get that out. And when we get that screw out, it's going to detach the motor from the truck like that. And we'll just kind of set it like that. And now we're going to detach this side frame. And that is done by loosening these two screws right here. And this Procedure will differ depending on the model you have, of course. But on this particular one, this is how it's done. And like I said, on most Lionel models, you don't have to open up the engine to change a tire. But on this one, for whatever reason, they put the screws facing up. And so to get access to them, you have to detach the entire truck. Most of the time, they have the screws on the bottom facing down so you can access them from the underside of the engine. Anyway, now we've got access to this wheel and the traction tire that's around it. Now, sometimes when you have to replace a traction tire, it's because the tire broke and fell off completely. But in this case, it's just really loose. And so when I go to remove this traction tire, you're going to notice that it pops right off the wheel really easily. That's not normal. It's not supposed to do that. 
Normally these tires are on here very tightly. The reason it's so loose is because, like I said, I ran this engine really hard when I was testing it and that loosened up one of these tires. So what we'll do is we'll take this loose tire and throw it away. It's no good. And now, packaged with the set is this little baggie of spare traction tires. So we'll go ahead and take one out and we'll pop it on the wheel and then we'll be all set. Here's the new traction tire. And by the way, just for comparison, here's the old tire, here's the new one. See the difference? This one's small and tight like it should be. This one is loose and flabby. And that's why it's getting replaced. Anyway, what we're going to do is stretch this new tire over this wheel. But it's pretty small, so we're going to need some help. So what I do is I take a flathead screwdriver, I hold down the tire on one end of the wheel, and then I use the flathead to work around and get it all the way around the tire like that. And just make sure that it's even all the way around, and it is. And there we go. And now we've got that new tire on the truck, and this wheel is going to be much happier when it's running on the layout. So now all we have to do is put this thing back together and we'll be all done. Okay, the engine's back together and we're good to go. Hopefully that helped some of you newcomers understand how to change a traction tire. Like I said, it's not something that comes up all the time, but it does happen every now and then and it's good to know how to do it. Anyway, moving on, aside from the engine, the set comes with three passenger cars. So here's the first one, number 1474. And I gotta say, these passenger cars are pretty nice. They've got these nice fluted plastic bodies with the metallic finish. The trucks and the couplers are die cast metal. The couplers are operating. They are the thumbtack style couplers. We've got nice clear plastic inserts in the windows. The doors on the sides of the cars open up and they snap shut like that so they are sprung. On the ends of the cars we've got these nice soft rubber diaphragms. You can see we've got some nice molded in details and an add-on brake wheel on one side. And the doors on the ends of the cars also open up and they're sprung so they will snap back shut. On the underside of the car we've got some decent molded in detailing going on as you can see. And then on the inside of the car we've got some nice seating going on. Now there are no figures but adding figures is very easy. All you have to do is take out a couple screws and open up the car and add your own figures. And the interior of the cars are lighted so they look very nice. Here's the second coach car, which is identical to the one you've already seen, except instead of having a number, this one has a name, Iletta. Bringing up the rear of the train is the Navajo Observation Car. Specs-wise, it's pretty much the same as the cars you've already seen, except it's got that beautiful observation end at one end of the car. And as you can see, it looks very nice. It's got a Santa Fe drum head at the bottom, and then some marker lights up top. But like most starter sets, the marker lights are non-functional. They're just cosmetic. Now, the set comes with the three passenger cars you've just seen, but if you want to, you can expand the train because Lionel has made a couple of add-on cars. They've made a baggage car and a dome car available for separate sale. Now, because this is a starter set, in addition to the train itself, you also get a generous supply of track and a power supply in the same box. So let's take a look at the track. You get 12 pieces of Lionel Fast Track. So there's four curved pieces right here. There's another four pieces right here, curved. And then you get four straight pieces right here. So 12 pieces in all and it's the high quality Lionel Fast Track. So this is a good setup and it's enough track to make a 40 by 60 oval. Now on these straight sections you've got one that has a power port for the power supply. This is what the power supply looks like. It's a wall wart so this end goes into the wall and this end goes into that power port on the straight piece of track. It's pretty simple. And then on this straight section, you've got a Lionel plug-and-play port, which is kind of a nice bonus. So if at some point you want to get a Lionel plug-and-play accessory, you can plug it in here and give it power very easily. So this is all the track. Now, 
I'm not going to take it out of the packaging because I've already got a layout, so I don't need to set up this oval of track. But that kind of answers another question that some of you may have, which is, if you get the set, are you restricted to using the track and the power supply that come with the set? And of course, the answer is no. You can use whatever O-Gauge track you want. I'm using Atlas track, but you can use MTH or Gargraves or whatever, and you can use whatever power supply you want as long as it gives the set about 18 volts AC or DC power, you should be fine. All right, so now I'm gonna start this thing up and demonstrate the controls and the sounds and the features and so forth, and then we'll wrap things up by running this set around the layout for a few minutes. Now, as I said before, there are a couple ways you can run this set. You can use the Lion Chief remote that comes with the set when you buy it, or you can run this set via the Lion Chief app on your smartphone, and that's because this set has Bluetooth on board. We'll start off with the easiest method, which is to use the Lion Chief remote. Using the Lion Chief remote is incredibly easy. Let me go ahead and put some power on the track. Okay, we've got power, and you can hear that the engine is making a whistling noise. That whistling noise means that it's got power and it is looking for a signal from the Lion Chief remote. So let's go ahead and turn on the Lion Chief remote. It's got a signal and that causes the engine to start up and we're good to go. Couldn't be easier. So we've got forward, reverse, horn, bell, and crew talk. Very easy. So if I scroll it forward, We move forward, bring it back to center, move it back, and we move backwards. Here's the horn, and here's the bell, and here are the crew talk sounds. And that's all there is to it. Like I said, it couldn't be easier. The alternative to the Lion Chief remote is to use the set's built-in Bluetooth connectivity to run the set from your smartphone or tablet using the Lionel Lion Chief app. So let me go ahead and put power on the track once again. Okay, we've got power, and once again, the engine is making that whistling noise, which means it's looking for a signal. So here's my smartphone. This is an iPhone 7 Plus. And I'm gonna go ahead and open the Lionel Lion Chief app. It's a free app that you can get on the App Store. And look at that, it already found the engine. If I click on the engine icon, you can see it says diesel locomotive. It's already connected. So here is the horn. Here's the bell. Here are the crew talk sounds. Welcome aboard the Santa Fe Super Chief. These are the buttons to throw the couplers. If this was a Lion Chief Plus engine, we could do that, but this particular engine, since it's with a starter set, doesn't have the automated couplers. We've got a sound menu, and from there we can adjust the volume on the horn and the bell and the crew talk and so forth. This is pretty cool. Right here, we can adjust the pitch of the horn and the bell. So watch this. So now, it's got a lower pitch. How cool is that? And we can raise it up. <laughs> and we can do the same with the bell. Pretty cool. And then here are the controls for the engine. So if we want to go forward, we'll just raise up the throttle. And there it goes. Change directions. And now we'll go backwards. Once again, it couldn't be easier. 
Now you may have noticed that when I started the engine moving, it took a little while for it to come up to speed. And that's because you can adjust the momentum setting on the engine. If you click the gear icon, here you've got the momentum, low, medium, and high. And the momentum adjusts how slowly or quickly the engine speeds up or slows down. If I put it on low, that's gonna make it speed up or slow down more quickly than if I put it on high. Right here, you can see there's a speed limit setting. This could be useful if you've got a small child that you wanna let run the set, but you don't want them to run it off the rails. You can adjust the maximum speed setting. That's pretty cool. Here's the smoke setting, but again, since this is a starter engine, it doesn't have a smoke unit, so that is grayed out. So that's all there is to it. It's really that easy. Now, if I close this menu, and I go back and click on the engine icon, and I click on this broken link button, it'll break the connection with the engine, and it'll go back to its default state where it's looking for a signal. Like that. Okay, it's time to take this thing for a spin around the layout, so let's go ahead and move it out. that about wraps it up for this review as you've seen this is a great little set if you're looking to get into the hobby or back into the hobby this is a great choice because it's got everything you need to get going now if you're interested in purchasing one of these as I said earlier the retail price on this set is right at four hundred and thirty dollars although if you go through a good Lionel dealer you should be able to get a bit of a discount off that retail price so check out your favorite Lionel dealer or you can check out the Lionel store at www.lionlstore.com. For now, that's it. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.